It's important to consider lighting before you start a stream, participate in an online video meeting, or do a video interview. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can go from this to this. So let's get started. What's up everyone, I'm Hinato, Senior Pro Market Specialist for Canon USA. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can improve the overall look on your online video meetings. Some of the topics we will be covering will be location, choosing a place in your home or office, camera, the difference between using a small webcam and a photo camera, background, how to light your background using practical lights, windows, how to manipulate the light coming from a window in the room, key lighting, how to create a soft light source for your key light. The first thing you're going to need to decide is what part of your home or office is going to become a dedicated streaming room. It could be your bedroom, a dining table, or even a large closet. For a lot of people, it tends to be whatever part of their house gets a lot of natural daylight. But for me, I like to base it off of my background. And the reason for that is because my background is what my audience is going to see. There are two kinds of backgrounds you can go after. The first one is up against the wall, which tends to be the easiest. The only thing you see is myself and the color of my wall. I'm personally not a fan of this type of setup. It doesn't really act enough depth and it's not very cinematic. But if you're a video game streamer, this could be beneficial in the sense that you can paint the area behind you with green screen paint and superimpose yourself onto the video stream. But for what I do and for what I need, I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna turn the camera around. I am not against the wall anymore, and now I'm aiming the camera towards the room, adding a little bit more depth to my image. Now, this is gonna help me get that more cinematic look I'm trying to achieve, but as you can tell, I'm still being out of exposed by the webcam, and it's not doing that good of a job in this tricky lighting situation. So let's move on to the next topic, camera selection. When it comes down to camera selection, one of the biggest factors that's going to affect the look of your video is the size of its sensor. On a traditional webcam, the sensor is really small. But if you upgrade to a camera with a larger sensor, like that of the G7X Mark III, the G7X Mark III utilizes a larger one inch sensor that offers a better looking image than that of my webcam. But to get the more cinematic look that I'm trying to achieve, I am going to have to go with a much larger sensor. I am now using a Canon EOS R mirrorless camera. This camera utilizes a 35 millimeter full frame sensor. The sensor is about two and a half times larger than that of the G7X Mark III and about seven times larger than that of my webcam. This larger sensor helps gain a more cinematic look with the help of the shallower depth of field within my image. When you compare all three sensors next to each other, you can see the different kinds of looks each camera can give you. As you progress to the larger sensors, you gain more detail and a shallower depth of field. For what I am trying to achieve, I will be going with the EOS R for its better image quality and shallower depth of field. And if you want to learn how you can use your Canon camera as a webcam, click on the link below to learn more about our EOS webcam utility. If you do decide to use a DSLR or mirrorless camera, you have the added option of changing your lenses. For my setup, I'm going with the RF 35mm with a 1.8 aperture. This wider aperture offers a great shallow depth of field at a great focal range. And if you tend to have long video meetings, you might want to invest in our AC adapter to make sure that your camera doesn't shut down during a very long meeting. This is when most individuals stop and say it's good enough but we're not going for good enough. We wanna stand out. So the next subject we're gonna talk about is your background. And how do we improve your background with a little bit of art direction and lighting? I decided to use my gear storage room as my main streaming room. In this room, I have my Canon Pro 1000 in the back of the room, a long lens on top of the bookshelf, and my camera bags are hung up against the wall on the other side of the room. Your background should show a little bit about who you are, so you can also see some of my professional work mounted on the walls. After you set your background, go back to your camera and look at your frame and exposure. On my camera, I'm still in auto exposure mode and it looks pretty much okay, but I feel like the background is a little bit too flat. Well, the way to solve that is by putting in some practical lights. So we're gonna add two desk lamps to the background. 
I thought these two small desk lamps could be good props, so I placed them one on each corner of the room. The two lamps helped in creating a more dynamic lighting to my background. One thing to be aware of is what kind of light bulb will you be using in your lamps? If you haven't noticed yet, the only natural light this room has is some daylight coming in from a small window to my left. As you can see in this comparison, a tungsten bulb has a warmer color and does not match with the same color temperature from the light coming from the window. But if I use daylight balanced bulbs, the light from the lamps begins to match the light from the window. You don't have to use daylight balanced bulbs, but it is something to be aware of. Getting back to the window in this room, let's head over to our next topic, manipulating the lighting from a window. Now, a majority of individuals will place their webcam next to a large window inside their home so that it can be naturally lit. To me, this plan only works if one, you're being lit from the front or from the side, and two, it helps complement the background you're trying to achieve. In this room, the small window to my left would have not really given me great lighting and it would have given me a terrible background. So you need to decide, is the lighting from that window helping or hurting your scene? If the window lighting is hurting your scene, you can place a dark black cloth over the window to block out the light, or you can soften the light source with some diffusion paper. For my setup, the lights help in giving me a nice edge lighting to my left side, so I decided to leave the window the way it is. Now, if you are lucky to have a large window placed in front of you with a great background, then you're done. Congrats, go start streaming. But for the rest of us, let's head over to the next step. This whole time, I've had the camera in auto exposure mode. And as you can see, I feel that my background and the lighting coming in from the window is a little bit too bright and too harsh. The benefit of using a more advanced camera is I have full control of my exposure. So let's change the exposure settings to benefit my background. Now that I've went from auto mode to manual exposure, I've locked in my settings and gave a background exposure that I'm happy with. Now, as you can see though, I'm clearly underexposed. So let's head over to our final section, key lighting. In this room, I don't have a huge front window to get exposed with. So I'm going to, have to recreate the look using a different light source. So let's look at three different kinds of light sources that you can use. In this shot, I'm being lit by another house lamp. It's offering nice soft lighting and it's using daylight balance bulbs so that it matches with the background lighting. In the second shot, I am now being lit by an LED panel. This specific light allows me to change its color temperature and have a brighter light source if I need it. But I feel that the lighting is too harsh on my face. If you want to soften your key lighting, then you need to increase the size of the light source. One trick to increasing your light source is to bounce it off a large whiteboard or for my setup, I decided to use a large lighting softbox and added a 200 watt daylight bulb inside. The larger the source, the softer the light will be. I am now happy with the look of my video feed and I also have a dedicated area for all my future online streaming or video meetings. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial video and if you did, please subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can be notified on future how-to videos. Take care everyone.